like Microsoft Word, right? So um, the second skill group application says that a child knows how to complete a task. Internet, right? So being able to go online, look at databases, use search engines to responsibly use uh, digital tools to find and evaluate information. So we've got devices, applications, internet, media arts, right? That's the fun part of computer technology. This would be a child that knows how to create digital artwork and expression with digital tools and applications, right? So video, animation, um, web. And this is my favorite one, which anybody who knows me in the room knows I love web technology, Tense Web Kids. Um, this would be the ability to create and organize web pages. Lastly, programming, right? So all of the other skill groups to me sort of culminate in programming. A lot of kids cannot sit down and code, right? So programming is a child knowing how to write instructions for the computer. So what? Why, why do we need computer literate kids all over the world? Why does this even matter? Well, I know it seems that a lot of kids, especially toddlers, they can pick up a device, right, and they can, it's like they instantly know how to game or they instantly know how to find what they need to get to. And I also know that there's parents that like to limit the time that their, ch their children gain. But the point is, to, is for kids to use technology and create with it and not just consume it. So the number one reason of why this matters to me is when you get kids in technology, and a couple of speakers have mentioned this, it builds a sense of self-confidence and optimism in them that is hard to sort of duplicate. And so that's one of the primary reasons I love working with kids in technology. 
Secondly, we need kids to be computer literate so that they're prepared for, prepared for their daily life, for their future career, and for school, right? There's a lot of testing in schools, and we already saw with Michael's presentation that um, there's a career out there for, the, for them that can pay them well if they choose technology. Um, so these days, it's not so much about an access divide, right? Because there seems to be devices everywhere. It's more about an, a knowledge divide, and creating computer literate kids will help us um, cure uh, the knowledge divide problem. So how do we do this? What are some real ground level ways to create computer literacy for 1.86 billion kids around the world? The first way is just by services. Someone mentioned sponsoring an hour of code, right? So co camps, classes, code -a school programs, learning programs, recreation center programs are a place that we can help to start to create computer literacy. People, everybody in this room, I'm sure, um, but parents, teachers, IT professionals, technology innovators, entrepreneurs, even device manufacturers can help us get there. We can have volunteers, nonprofit organizations, and different business partners that can help us get to kids around the world. And lastly, products. Right? And so products is a small category, but it expands around the world. There's websites, there's applications, books and guides, activity kits, toys, games, and um, most importantly, content that comes from lesson plans and curriculum that others can use um, wherever they are. So one of the ways that me and my business partners are helping to create computer literacy around the world is with Webby Kids. Webby Kids is for kindergartner, kindergarten through fifth grade, um, and we teach kids to make websites, games, and apps. One of the things that we're working to launch this summer is uh, an application called a play space where kids will be able to log in and do self-paced courses that teach them how to code. So look out, look out for us on webkids.com. <laughs> so most of you in the room have a card. So our, me and my business partners, we've got this vision of computer literacy for every kid in the world, but it's still kind of fuzzy of what it looks like. So we need your help. So close your eyes. If every kid in the world is computer literate, computer literate, how will the world be or what would it look like? Okay, open your eyes. So the card you have is anytime today or now, draw, sketch, write. A, a mind cloud of words, whatever you can come up with, a description of how you think the world would be, how it would be different in a positive way if every kid were computer literate. So help me paint the picture. Send me your pictures, your creative ideas, your new thinking, any ways you can help to Natasha at webbykids.com or feel free to post on Facebook at uh, Facebook slash webbykids and help me spread the word and create computer literacy. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Any questions? Pass them the mic just so we can get it on the transcription. One of them is Terry. There's me, Terry. Krishna is not here today, but he is based in Atlanta. And then there's Ivana, Joanna, and Daniel. She is in Washington State. Um, I'm Karen. I'm going to get to the developer. Um, and sometimes we are into this. Uh, I want to go right back to the video. It's a good right now. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the things that we realized, actually this recent, just recently, this past December when we posted an hour ago, is that for technology professionals in particular, their kids have a tendency to not be as interested in technology, even though we know how valuable it can be in their lives and in their careers. And so I would recommend to get your child in a forum where there's other kids. 
and have them working on fun, kid-friendly projects, right? So when you go to some place like, um, and it's not, a, it's not bad, but places like Khan Academy are places that assume you already have a prior level of knowledge, it's hard for them to grasp even why they're doing it. So one of the things that I noticed that really helps is to get kids around other kids and they're working on projects together, and then they're more likely to pick up some of the concepts that you believe are important to them, but for them it just feels like they're playing, but we know they're playing and learning. <laughs> Any other questions? How would you address the level, the varying level of access to devices? So we know that kids who have come from higher income families, obviously, they can have more access to everything from computers, iPads, and so forth, whereas kids from lower income families are less likely to have access to that. Uh, there's usually, well, I guess I can't say usually, but there are several places that um, host events. And so that's usually the easiest place it is to go for your family or for yourself or for your kids um, to get access to devices that you don't normally go to. So I would say look for events in, in your area, um, like conferences or small code thons or even a meetup, right, where a friend might have a device. Because I know that um, when I volunteer at places like Girls Inc., we have no computers. We literally go around to the staff and collect up their computers, and they're all different computers. But I said all that to say, you can usually get access to um, devices you normally can't from a friend, through a peer, from more attending events. It does time, sorry. My time's up, thank you. <laughs>